Um, it's amazing to be up here talking at MICA. I haven't uh, been talking at MICA since my, I think my capstone project, so this has been, it's been a while. Um, so again, visualizing with Play-Doh, the hook, the meat, the package, and what it got me. Uh, this is a little bit about my career journey. Again, I'm Amy Cecil. I'm talking about my work in 2018 here, so not my work from MICA, um, post my MICA career, but stuff that came out of my MICA experience and then sort of catapulted me into this rest of the career, starting the Data Viz Society and winning Information is Beautiful Awards and, and more work there. Um, so a few highlights from this. I teach in the Remote Data, Data Analytics and Visualization Graduate Program. Um, I'm a three-time Information is Beautiful Award winner with two of those awards in the Unusual category and co-founding the DVS, which is what brought us all here today. So thank you, IIB and um, Data Visualization Society. Uh, so in 2018, I was sort of stuck in a creative rut. I was working on my computer a lot. Um, I was doing data visualization, but maybe not in the way I wanted to do it. And so, you know, taking some inspiration from Ellie Torben's world, uh, I did the 100 day project. And so this was a global art project where you do one thing every day for 100 days and post it online. Um, so trying to do things quickly and iterate and do things out of my normal sort of pace. Uh, I wanted to do it with data visualization. That's not normally what people do. They do it with drawing or, or something simple like that. Um, and then I ultimately decided to create data visualizations with Play-Doh. So when I was going into this, I had a, a few constraints for the project. I wanted it to be a personal project. I didn't want to work with data I worked with every day. I wanted each visualization, which I did every day, to take me one hour max. Um, this was a very ambitious goal, but if you've worked with data before, but that's what I set out to do. Uh, I wanted to have something less precise and relatable than what I was doing in my day job. I wanted something colorful and fun. Uh, I wanted to work with my hands in three dimensions. We don't see a lot of 3D data viz often, right? You have like 3D pie charts, which are totally banned from our universe. Uh, and I come from a ceramics background, so I love working with my hands, but I didn't want to work with clay. I either had to wait to glaze it to get color in there, or it was just going to be like photos of brown things, and that was not going to be good for social media. Um, so that's part of the reason I chose Play-Doh. And I wanted to get away from my computer. So in this project, I only used Play-Doh and then phone apps and uh, my phone camera. So it could have been much more polished in a, a different version, but this was really to like get that creativity going and, and to produce things quickly. Um, and so these are some of the data vizs that I created. So the project's called Day Do Viz, doing everything uh, once a day with play dough and visualizing them. It was, it brought that like fun childhood aspect I was looking for with that medium. It was relatable because it was play dough and it was imprecise, which is what I was looking for. I used my personal information and created quick visualizations, like what beverages I liked in what quantities. And I got to do fun things like create little Play-Doh lime wedges to put in my tequila drinks and my iced tea. I also got to take on more serious topics, like my showing my financial data. Doing it with Play-Doh felt like it was a safe way to do it because of that level of imprecision. These weren't actual numbers. They were just, you know, Play-Doh squishes of numbers. So I didn't have to have that, like, you could tell exactly how much my, play, my paycheck was. And coming from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, there I had learned the importance of talking about financial data and how it's such a taboo subject in the US, but it's really good for people to talk about their financial data. They have a better understanding of themselves and how they fit in the world. And so that I really learned that lesson there and wanted to bring more of that to the world of data viz and to the world in general. And then I tried to embrace the 3D medium. Uh, in this piece, I used an adapter kit for plugs I had laying around, and I used it to visualize how many people worldwide used each electrical outlet plug. I also used this as a way to toss the electrical outlets that I knew I was never going to go to those countries. So it made my, my kit a little bit smaller. Eventually, I came up with a framework for thinking about how I was doing good data viz. 
And over time, I've come up with the pithy name of thinking about this as the hook, the meat, and the package, and how you need these three components to work together to create something truly outstanding. So the hook is the question the visualization answers or why you're creating it. The, the package is the visual format and design, and the meat is the subject and the data. And I found myself starting from one of these three corners of inspiration and sort of figuring out the other two pieces along the way. But it was really trying to like grab onto one of these corners as what I was gonna do and, and then figure it out it was how I worked best. So the hook is probably my favorite way to start a visualization. It's the question that the visualization answers, the so what. And with a good hook, even with a less interesting format, you can entice an audience. My mother has always said to me that it always rains on my birthday. But was that really true? I wanted to find out. Um, you can see that it rained the year I was born, and I think that's where she got that assumption. But I looked up data and I took that to mean raining on me, no matter what my specific location was, DC or Chicago, on my birthday. And so I looked up historically if it had rained and then added in other temperature data for just added context. So starting the visualization with a hook often means you have to build a data set to answer your question. And this makes for a really compelling piece because no one has visualized this custom data set before. And it's completely unique to your story. Um, so if it rains on my birthday is actually a more common question than I would have thought. It's a really good hook. And I see semi-significant traffic to my website based on people Googling this question. Not sure this is what they were expecting, but here you go. Uh, sometimes you have information that the world just needs to know. Uh, that's some good meat, right? In this case, I was listening to a podcast interview with Steve Delinsky talking about his book on different types of pizza in Chicago. Obviously, the world needed to know this. Uh, we in Chicago are more than, uh, we are about more than just deep dish pizza. I knew this information needed to be categorized and visualized, and this was, so there wasn't a major hook to this visualization. I didn't answer a question, I took more of an exploratory approach. However, the information is interesting enough that it carries the visualization. I'll admit, for me, while this visualization started with the meat, I think the package works too, because who doesn't love teeny little Play-Doh pizzas? Sometimes you're inspired by a, a visual style, interaction, or format, the package. And I use this as the catalyst to find a data set that worked for the visualization to, that I wanted to create. Before there was the W.E.B. Du Bois challenge, I was inspired by his work, specifically this serpentine bar chart where the bar wraps back and forth several times to convey that the measure is much larger than other bars. So I wanted to use this format and layer in other data elements like Georgia Lupi does so well in her work. Um, I found a data set of roller coasters that would serve this format well and be interesting. My hook, admittedly, was not that good. I was looking at the five longest roller coasters in the US, and I wanted to see what they had in common, which is you know, not all that, that much, actually. Um, so I displayed the length of the roller coaster in this serpentine bar style and added in other data elements with three-dimensional icon shapes. So the package, the visual format here, is really what carries the work home and what is interesting about this visualization. So visualizations that have a strong hook, meat, and package are meaningful and memorable. And hopefully you'll find inspiration from one of these three corners and figure out the other two pieces to make some incredible and maybe even award-winning work. So sometimes I look at this project as a failure, right? We're often harder on our own work than others are, or at least I am. And so there are a bunch of things about this project that did not reach my goals that I failed on. I did not create 100 visualizations. I did not do it every day. It took more than an hour. I mean, just the data collection alone on some of these. And ultimately, I spent more money than I made on this project. Uh, I did not ultimately get paid to create data visualization out of Play-Doh, but if you're looking to commission something like that, I might still be interested. 
However, this project was actually a success. And there were a lot of successes that came out of this for me that ultimately helped my career. In 2018, I won a silver in the unusual category, and I got to go to New York and talk about Plato on stage. And it's one of the only data viz projects that my family sort of understands. So although winning an information a beautiful, is beautiful award is an amazing accomplishment, what was actually cool to my family is that uh, Steve Delinsky, the Chicago pizza office author, liked my project and retweeted it. My aunt totally freaked out when he retweeted me because then I was Chicago famous. Uh, he also offered me a free pizza tour and I took my dad and I got to show off my knowledge of Chicago pizza styles. The project was featured on Andy Kirk's 10 significant data visualization developments from the first half of 2018. It was also featured in Nathan Yao's Flowing Data newsletter. Anne Emery had me write a blog post about it on her blog for Depict Data Studio. And these things got a lot more eyeballs on me and got my other work out too. And I did a bunch of interviews about the project, which helped my name recognition in the space. I got to chat with Ali Torbin for one of the first times, and Bill Shander featured me on his LinkedIn series. I also got a non-Data Viz podcast media credit um, when I was featured on the Good News podcast. And so I got to talk about this project beyond just the Data Viz world. I got more comfortable talking about my work and being interviewed because of this. In 2019, the project was briefly featured as part of the Malifor 28 Women Graphic Awards exhibit in Spain. And it was cool to see the work printed and featured alongside amazing people like Georgia Lupi. It was featured in Andy Kirk's second edition of his data visualization book. And it's listed in the gallery of physical visualizations, which was a huge goal for me. I really wanted this physical aspect in, in 3D medium. So this is a great archive if you've never seen this before. And at IO in 2019, I held a workshop table called Squishy Data Viz and got to watch other people get a little bit weird with Play-Doh and create their own visualizations. But the thing I really love about this project was that it was picked up by teachers. At least a few people have used the concept of having students or workshop participants use Play-Doh and create visualizations. A lot of people get stuck sketching and say they can't draw. However, I've never heard anyone say that they can't Play-Doh. It lowers the barrier to entry to creating data viz and is just a lot of fun. So I, what else did this project get me? I got asked about it in job interviews, which was fun. I gained a few hundred Twitter followers and the nickname Play-Doh Girl for a while. Um, I had to prove that I could do more than just Play-Doh data viz and visualize other things. Um, but this project helped me prove that I could express myself creatively and gain me attention that I then pivoted into other things that ultimately helped me create the Data Viz Society, uh, lead a team of data visualization designers, and start teaching. So in that way, it was a huge success. So thank you, I'm Amy Cecil. You can email me if you have more questions um, and reach me on all the social medias here. <laughs>